I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. Man, one more time. Steve Harvey got a radio show. Yeah, I do, man. I thank God for it every day. You know, um, my message this morning, man, is real clear. Uh, It's something that's been on me to uh, share. And um, it's it's amazing, you know, God can do some amazing things for you. But what happens along the way is, and I, and, I, and I don't know that I mean to say but, but the fact that God can do some amazing things for you, there comes adversity along with it. Every single time. It, 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 it just goes without saying. And I've... Uh, as I was on this uh, press tour last week and I was going through everything I was going through and I was doing what I was doing, I was having a a, 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 a fairly, I mean, well, not fairly, but a hugely successful week. I had never seen this type of hatred uh, before. I, I hadn't seen it. And it was, it's a great trick that the devil does, you know, when, when God is blessing you and giving you some of some some great opportunities in your life as all of you have gone through and it is isn't it amazing how some negative thing crops up and that's what you have to focus on I, I found out that I don't have to but you wind up focusing on it and your energy goes over to that to try to deal with it counteract wonder why it was happening you got to make phone calls what was this about blah 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 and and it and it and it it, it throws you off the course you are on. The beginning of the week, I was so grateful. I was so amazed. I was really thanking God for opportunity. For this brief moment, the enemy slides this, this little factor in there that causes you to, and it requires your attention. You have to pay it attention because you don't know. You're going, wow, man, let, let me see what this could really be. How, how much dirt is this really that they're trying to do. And so it requires your attention. But in that attention, you lose your focus on really all the blessings and the good thing that God does for you. The, the enemy has an amazing trick that he does that. And it was and it was in my head, I got to tell y'all, all week long, man. And I was doing some amazing stuff. I was having such a blessed week, man, in terms of press and PR and where God was taking me. And then when I got back, I was talking with my wife. And then I was talking to a good friend of ours. 
And they shared something that really helped me out. And they said to me, new level, new devil. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's, it's something really simple. But new level, new devil. Every time you go to another level, every time you go a little bit higher, every time God has a blessing in store for you, every time he moves you in position, do you understand that the enemy's job is to make you not see the blessing, make you not be grateful for it, lose your focus and focus on this that I just threw in your way, this stumbling block, this obstacle, this trickery. And man, I was, I was, I got, I just got to tell you, man, I mean, I, it, it was so filled with hatred that I had to, I really spent some time addressing it. I, you know, I got publicists on the phone. I said, what's, what's happening here? Y'all not watching this? Y'all not, what, what, what was, what was this attack? You knew, you didn't know these angles? What, what was, and, and you know, Steve, chill. New level, new devil. If you get a promotion on your job, guess what? Somebody ain't happy that you got the promotion. So here come the hate. You don't even, you don't even really know these people. You, you have no idea. Every time you make a decision to make your relationship with your spouse better, man, this is it. You know what I'm going to start doing? I'm going to do this, man, so me and my girl can go on and have this, or me and my man can go on and have this. Watch what happens. Every single time, here comes the new level, <laughs> the new devil, the trick. You don't need to do that. What you doing that for her? She don't appreciate it. He ain't going to appreciate it. Look over here, man. Look at that right there. Ain't he not, you know, he missed, he didn't call you, and he said he was going to, all types of stuff. It just happens all the time. And I was sitting here talking with this friend, really good friend, very spiritual person. And they said, uh, you know something, Steve? You know, I was talking to Jesus and said, I was having this conversation with Christ. And I said, God, for real? You mean to tell me every time that something good happens to me? You mean every time? I try to go to the next level. Every time you put me on the next level, you mean to tell me that I got to go through this right here? Are you for real? She, and then my friend said, Jesus said to her, they did it to me. And we just fell out laughing. They did it to me. They did it to him. They did it to him. For him to go to the next level and, you know, I was, just, um, I, w- I was just going over the whole story about the crucifixion and everything. That had to be amazing, man. Of all the hate he had endured, all the prosecuting he had endured, they thought ultimately what we'll do is we'll nail him on a cross and crucify him, and that'll be the end of him. And we'll put him in this tomb, and we'll put this big stone up there, and that'll be the end of him. But what they did not know was all you was doing was setting the tone for the next level. Because eventually the stone got rolled away and he went and got placed with his father, where he was headed to anyway. He ultimately knew that his ultimate goal was to get to his father. So when you when you when you thought you were doing what you were doing to him, and you put him in the tomb and you put the big stone up in there, and the stone got rolled got rolled away, and he went eventually to where he was trying to get to. That story is in place for all of us to remember that when we are going through some things, could it be because we are going to a place? You know, it could be just a place in life. It could be just a a, a different level in life. That's all it has to be. But there is going to be the adversarial challenges that come with it. And those are the moments we must expect, expect and take them head on and still not lose your focus or appreciation for what God has done for you. So in light of all of that, I'm able to say today that I thank my Heavenly Father. I really do for all the blessings he's bestowed upon me and all of the haters and all of the liars and all of the backstabbers and all those people. When you get through lying, when you get through stabbing, when you get through gossiping and doing what you do, I'm still going to the next level. I'm still going. You cannot stop 
what God is has in store for you. No one can stop that. Keep your faith right there where it's supposed to be in God. And just remember, new level, new devil. Go on, keep stepping. He over there. He got to do his job. Now, he is who he is. You know, he's evil, so he going to do his job. And please know, he has plenty of people who are willing to work for him, free of charge. Absolutely, man. They ain't got nothing else to do. They ain't going nowhere. Ain't finna watch you go nowhere. They don't like you. I'm gonna do everything I can to show people how much I don't like you. But watch this. Every single time when they get through lying, writing it, typing it, saying it, all they're gonna do is watch you go right on up to that next level. All they are is preparation. I have learned some amazing things from last week. I'm ready now. New level. Cool with it. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Me. May I have your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Day after the Super Bowl, I am here to discuss it, not in great lengths, <laughs> because there's nothing to discuss. True. But ladies and gentlemen, we are here, Shirley Strawberry. Good morning, Steve. Happy day after. Carla Pharrell is on vacation, mm-hmm. and so wow. is Junior. Well, wow. Carla's out sick. Actually, she's out sick. Junior's on vacation. Vacation? Yeah, we, we do get it. such a thing as vacation. You yeah. took a dive. Yeah. yeah. Well, I should have did that then. <laughs> <laughs> well, only is, if Cleveland was playing. This then is your show. <laughs> Oh, if Cleveland was playing, I wouldn't be in a condition to be here. <laughs> I want to hear about you and Baker Mayfield. That's what I want to hear about. But oh, finish, man. Finish, finish so, Jay? Yeah. Well, I know you said there's nothing to discuss about the game, but there's a lot to discuss. <laughs> this was the worst case of officiating I'd ever seen in my entire life. The game what? should be played over, okay? What? Are, are you talking about the- over. The Man, NFC Championship? You know yes, played completely over. We was cheated. You know. We was robbed. Who? That was two weeks ago. What? You know. Robbed. What L.A. Sports. L.A. was robbed. Hey, what's up, Tommy? <laughs> what's up, big dog? <laughs> Thoroughly and Ignite J. What it do? What it do? Hey, good morning. <laughs> they, they robbed us, Shirley. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. I Okay, I have to watch because we have to watch the commercials, right? That was good. <laughs> it was some good commercials. I was at the game, I so I didn't see no I commercials. Big dog, I you missed bet it. they was better than the game. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, okay, we'll get into that. But, okay, so let's start off first, Steve, with the NFL honors, with which you nailed. <laughs> you did. You did. Excellent job. Excellent job Saturday night. Come on. Come on, get it to me. Excellent job. You looked great. I'm trying to do junior. I now. know. <laughs> you, you looked fantastic. <laughs> it was fun, though. The energy was great in the room. Uh, I, I just loved all the self expression with the fashions and everything. And I loved your no. moment when you introduced uh, Baker Mayfield, the quarterback for the uh, uh, Cleveland Browns. No, Shirley. Yeah. When, when he thought Ninja was something oh, yes. else on the television, yes. that's the one. No, <laughs> yeah. Tommy. That's the moment Tommy. had me you right were like, Wait a <laughs> minute. Ninja, I was waiting please, that huh? car. You were blinking. I saw please Dak please Prescott, welcome. boy. They put the camera on Dak. Dak was on the floor. <laughs> I said, please welcome Tyler. And the... <laughs> <laughs> you were blinking, Steve. What did that run that back again? Let me see that again. Wait a minute. Oh, I know that what I'm I think sorry. it is. Tyler the ninja. 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 That was funny. <laughs> that was <laughs> funny. Yes. That was a moment. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was good. Yeah. yeah, you look good. Yeah, you did. Appreciate that. Yeah, I'm well, prime to, time I had that red the Baker on Mayfield for. thing. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll come back and talk more about the Super Bowl, Steve's great night on Saturday, all of that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, so you were actually at the Super Bowl. You were yeah. actually there. There. What, what was that like? I mean, uh, I mean, you know, that's the first time I've ever been in the stadium. Oh, okay. But you've the seen stadium all the was, was outstanding. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the, mm-hmm. Yeah, the game was the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you talk about a waste of time. I mean, 
I mean, I I could not believe the 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 offensive output that the Rams put forward. Mm. I I was astonished at how Go. many times they ran Gurley out to the flat, not to figure out that Patriots were spying on him and had somebody in the flat with him every time. Wow. I I was amazed, man, mm. yeah, because look. the the to me the Rams defense played a great game. Yeah, if you get Tom Brady all the way to the fourth quarter with three, three points? points. You I mean, man, you're supposed to win the Super Bowl. Mm. If you hold Brady to 13 points, you're supposed to win the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And they and they didn't. I I, I just said, I was sitting there, I looked up, I was the worst. Can I, can I say something about the game? This, this is the absolute truth. They were all playing like nobody wanted to go meet Trump. That's how they were playing. <laughs> Good observation, Shay. Because uh, they know the winner got to go meet Trump. We ain't going I'm down there. I don't want to go. Come with that, man. I fell on the floor, man. That's funny. Oh. That's funny. Well, uh, you, you missed some good commercials, though, Big Yeah, guy. commercials were really good, right? Yeah, my favorite. I I didn't. I didn't. My favorite was the football banquet with all the legends yes, there. That, that was my favorite, bar none. Okay, was the that best one, one I saw. Oh my god, I love because they showed that in the stadium. Oh, did they? Okay, that yeah, that I was you phenomenal. Like the, the elevator one when the, the used cars, um, Shirley. Well, I mean, it, everything else paled in comparison. They were was, good, that but good. that one was yeah. greatness to me. I just love that commercial. I just really, T-Mobile has some good ones. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I the saw the football banquet back. one, and I saw the elevator one. Uh-huh. The elevator one was good. I thought and all good. I could do was get an idea of what they were doing, you know. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. It, it was, it was, man, I, I can't tell you, but man, you'd have thought that this game was played in New England. Oh, yeah, oh, because all the crowd. fans, yeah, they said there oh. were so many New England fans there. Oh, dog, it was, it, you couldn't walk nowhere. It was just Brady and Gronk jerseys. <laughs> my <laughs> wife, uh-huh. my wife wore a Patriots hat. <laughs> okay. Well, can we, can we back up just a minute? I just want to just give Gladys Knight some love for oh, the yeah. national anthem. She sang the national Look anthem. She looked um, oh, she was amazing. Cold. Yeah, amazing. She's 74 she was years old. She looks beautiful. And her oh, voice man, is she, strong. Oh, she was greatness. And, you know, to all of the people that was talking about what, what about the boycott of the NFL, what boycott? You know, this, this calling on artists not to perform you know, I, I've just been a proponent of this. If we're going to boycott, then let's get organized so everybody know what the purpose and the tone is. Mm-hmm. I didn't get met people mad at Gladys for singing the national anthem. I didn't get that. Here's the reason. they were on, Even on my wife's page, they were making comments after we posted the Super Bowl and we were at the game. What happened to y'all not supposed to be so going to the game and supporting the game? Whoa, 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 whoa. Where did this come from? Because when I was that meeting. Oh, dog! I, I I don't understand where people come from. We're supposed to be showing our support for Colin Kaepernick. I, I want everybody to understand something. None of the players are kneeling anymore right. at the national anthem because the president came in and changed the narrative. Was he dead wrong? Absolutely, absolutely, he was dead wrong. But guess what? All the players was at the NFL honors. Mm-hmm. All the players that were supposed to be there were at the Super Bowl. Well, not all of them that were supposed to be there. The Saints were supposed to be there. But, you know. But everybody came to the game. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't know where this cry from the disorganized masses, not even the masses, but this small group of people, who are very disorganized, who mad at people for going to the Super Bowl. I, I didn't understand that. Wow. Not well, enough. I mean, Ka- Colin Kaepernick still has his cause. He still, you know, stands up for what he believes in. But he's also moved on in a sense that he's with Nike now. He's doing, you know, other things. 
So, I mean, the cause is still there, of course. I mean, I mean, that cause was long before Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. The, we've been fighting this cause for a long time. Mm-hmm. He brought attention to it, and the NFL players joined in. But they saw what had happened. So instead of ruining all of their lives with this ill-fated uh, protest that they've changed the narrative on, the brothers decided to go about it a different way. So they're standing for the national anthem now. And we just have to tackle it another way. Especially because mainly the now. president yeah. jumped on it and made it a political cause of his. Yeah. And changed the narrative. And so, you know, I, that's what I didn't understand. You know how much that's so Gladys has been through, man? Gladys has been through please. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the reason you have a halftime show with black people on it. Got a lot to do with Gladys. Gladys and speaking of phone, man. halftime, well, you were there for the halftime. How was that? Yeah. How was that with Maroon 5? Oh, it was and, crazy live. Uh, that 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 boy, is, is his name Adam a- Levine? Adam Levine, Levine. Uh-huh. Yeah. uh-huh. That's that's a bad boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the sexiest Is it 2,000 tattoos or is it 3,000 tattoos? How many <laughs> did you count? I counted at least 2,500. Yeah. put another yeah. one on right after the game. He was yeah, there. yeah. the lady screamed when he took his shirt off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Big boy, um, Travis Scott. Yeah, so that was it for the halftime. Um, yeah, I'm glad you liked that, Steve. It, it seemed fun. It definitely did. No, it was did. really good. Mm-hmm. Watching them set the stage up and get rid of it, wow. Yeah. All right, uh, we'll come back. Reverend Motown, Deacon Def Jam in the building right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, coming up at the top of the hour, Miss Ann will be here with our national headlines. You're all right, Steve? And in, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And in entertainment news. Just recovering from that exciting game <laughs> last night. <laughs> woo uh, Entertainment news. Uh, Jesse Smollett returns to the stage after his recent attack. And uh, Shad Moss was also arrested over the weekend. Bow Wow. We'll talk about that. But right now, it is Monday. Reverend Motown, Deacon Def Jam in the building with church complaints. Uh-oh. Gavel boss Come on here, Pastor. Ah, muscle for God. Huh? About that what? today, <laughs> today is Monday. Yes, it is. A day where we gavel. That's right. And complain. Mm-hmm. About Sunday. About Sunday. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. <laughs> what a day to complain about. Mm-hmm. Let us begin, Deacon Def J. Ah, good morning, Pastor. Uh, the congregation seemed to have a, a problem with you, first and foremost, Pastor. Um, they're wanting to know how much money, uh, how much of the church money did you spend on this suite that you was at the Super Bowl last night? And uh, oh. how, the, the, the congregation wants to know exactly how much money you spent on this suite. We feel like it is some unnecessary spending that is coming from the congregation money. Uh, well, just to rest my uh, sheep assured All right. that the jackpot, jackpot joint of Jerusalem does right. not pay me enough to get no sweet down at that damn stadium. Then how did you get it? That's what they're saying then. I was invited down there <laughs> to be a participant. In the suite. So I, so I spent you saying, no church. Okay. So this was not your suite. No, it wasn't my suite. You saw the white folk in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I would let the congregation know. Not yeah. his suite. White people's suite. He was in. Yeah. All right. Put that, write that down. Yes, write that man. down. Now, here's another issue, Pastor. All of our stripper members cleaned up big time this weekend at the Super Bowl in Atlanta. Uh, Pastor, the financial committee is asking that these dollar bills be dry cleaned or washed in hot water and bleach before putting in the collection basket. It's on you to talk to these strippers about getting this money clean. I've already spoke with the strippers, and because of our uh, SM... Uh, SMC order. Hmm? Uh, S what? 
I probably shouldn't say that, though. Yeah. You know, the SMC is the Strippers Ministry Commission. <laughs> oh. I've asked the strippers to one. please, since y'all did so well this weekend, mm. to tithing for strippers this week was 20%. Instead of 10. Oh. Instead of 10. And you ain't got to wash it, scrub it, flip it, rub it, or nothing. Mm. Just bring it. All right. All right. I'll remember strip what bring it said. In. Yeah. We love well, they'll be a in later this huh? Tonight, they're getting in. They, they still there right now, but they'll be in tonight. Oh, that's right. That's <laughs> yeah, they still on oh, the plane path. I just want to know what to do with the money when they arrive. Moving along. No, they they not on the plane right now. Some on the bus. <laughs> yeah. Them nah, ain't, them ain't plane people. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Why would they be on a bus and they didn't make so much money? I don't know. Well, one of the right. girls Ubered in from, <laughs> from Chicago. From Chicago? Uh-huh. He Ubered they from Chicago. They were five deep in an Uber. <laughs> really, <laughs> Pastor? Yeah. <laughs> Just want you to know that. You can't carry all that cash to the airport either. <laughs> yeah. All and right, Pastor, Uber, here's another the issue. The Uber driver had such a good time, he cut his app off. <laughs> <laughs> a free ride. All right. Uh, you, as you know, it's February, Pastor. We are in the middle of Black History, and uh, the program is coming up. Listen, you're going to have to talk to Brother Jermaine King and tell him just because his last name is King doesn't mean he will be uh, given the Dr. King speech during the Black History program. He has six felony convictions and just got out of bail for, for robbing a... Uh, on bail for robbing a liquor store on MLK Boulevard. You're going to have wow. to talk to him. Wow. He's not going to be in the program this year. Our program is the entire month, and we are not out of black people yet. <laughs> <laughs> so unless we run out of black people, no. Jermaine King will not be <laughs> participating in any capacity at Black History Month. Thank you. Thank you very much. He's the only part of Black History Month. He ought to be up. He ought to be in Black History. Committed the most crimes without getting his ass shot. (laughs) Yes. Yes, indeed. All right. Now, this is something new. I don't think you knew this was going to be happening, Pastor. Our first uh, choir robot member, Sister I Tell Sparks, uh, will start her first day this coming Sunday in the choir. The problem is someone has programmed Cardi B hit some money instead of Kirk Franklin Stone. So you need to be ready for what this girl might say. Uh oh. Uh oh, Pat. I have told y'all that we don't do robots in our heavenly angelic choir. <laughs> Sister, I tell you, very good looking though, Pat. Just so you know. But she hard though. <laughs> 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 you oh, <understand>. God! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, now. <laughs> no flesh and bones. Hey, 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 you hey, you can't me. ever replace flesh. Let's church say amen. 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 Yes, amen. yes, sir. <laughs> Ain't nothing like it. I don't care how much of it you got. It's nothing right. like flesh. He <laughs> what, though, Pastor? <laughs> she hard. <laughs> you almost lost it, Deacon. <laughs> I'm still in here. Uh, okay, Pastor. Uh, here's another situation we have. I need you to speak with Sister Desiree Flowers. Uh, she is running up on members and knocking them out. She is getting ready for her first MMA fight. She has already knocked out Sister Doris Faye and Deacon Corey Bates. Brother Corey says he he tried to tap out, but she wouldn't let it. Well, then I have an idea. All Uh-oh. right. To raise money for the church building fund, Black mm. History Month, we're going to have our first female male uh, bout at the church, and we're going to have Sister Desiree Flower whip Jermaine King ass. <laughs> <laughs> now, how about that? <laughs> All right. That works out for me, Pastor. Thank you. 
coming up at <laughs> coming up at the top of the hour. I'm talking about just powder Jermaine King right off. <laughs> Entertainment <laughs> news and an update on national news with Miss Ann Tripp. Pop pop. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. <laughs> Jesse Smollett, Jesse Smollett, uh, returned to the stage Saturday night at the Troubadour in Los Angeles. Now, this was his first performance since his brutal racist and homophobic attack, a homophobic attack last week in Chicago. Jesse told the audience, I had to be here tonight. I couldn't let them win. After the show, Jesse cleared up some details about the attack. He said he suffered, he suffered bruised not broken ribs, and that he wasn't hospitalized. He was not hospitalized, okay? He added, above all, he fought them back. Uh, He said, I'm the gay Tupac. There you go. And, huh? Okay. Yeah, yeah, he fought them back, and he said, look, (laughs) in other words, yeah. (laughs) I mean, I I believe he fought back. You know, -hmm. know, I, I don't know why people would think you know, one thing has to do with another. You, 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 you know, you jump on a man, you gonna, you gonna, you gonna, you gonna get yourself, you know, touched up now. Mm-hmm. I'm going, okay. Yeah, and know. it's an ongoing investigation too by Chicago police. Also in Atlanta, uh, Bow Wow was arrested for alleged domestic violence. Bow Wow what? is accused of assaulting his on again, off again girlfriend, uh, Kayomi Leslie. Uh, their mugshots have been plastered all over social media. If you've been on the gram and stuff, you've seen the pictures. She says he assaulted her while he says it was actually the opposite. In his mugshot, he has a few long scratches on his forehead. Oh, this the shot? Uh Uh-huh, and under his right eye. You see that? She didn't have any visible marks on her face at all on her mugshot picture. Bow Wow wound up being booked for battery with substantial physical harm and was released on $8,000 bail on Saturday. Later that night, Bow Wow was spotted leaving Magic City in Atlanta. What better way to cure yourself? How you do it now? <laughs> Are you get it kidding off your mind? Take a trip to go to, to, Are you to kidding? Magic City. Mind? Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's the place to uh-huh. I just I just saw mind. the mugshot of Bow Wow. I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm hoping he walked away. I mean, he looks like he got the worst of it. So yeah, he does. And I'm hoping it's because he just he didn't do anything. You yeah. know, I, I I would I did, I would never see that from Bow Wow. Mm-hmm. So it does look like you know he got he did the right pretty thing. good. You know, I mean, you know, ho- hopefully he did the right thing. I mean, yeah. now domestic violence folks can go both ways. Definitely, you yeah. know. You know, it can, it can go both ways. Absolutely. Um, uh, men have been in physically abusive relationships from women. Yeah, I mean, not nearly as much, but you're absolutely right, Steve. And, yeah. you know, we've said often on this show t- to teach our daughters not to hit men. You know, right. just uh-huh. don't 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 do that. We we always teach men not to hit women. But and I'm and I'm yeah. really hoping that Bow Wow didn't didn't hit this woman. Yeah. Well, she didn't yeah. have any physical scars on her face like he had. Well, yeah. hope. Hopefully that's the case. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, that was crazy, huh? Really? Yeah, I don't. But Magic uh, City. But he went to Magic <laughs> City. Yeah, and yeah, it that, that, made that, that, it that, all better. Keep going back to Magic City, though. I'm going to forever go back you t- to Magic <laughs> You're talking to your nephew, Steve. What who do you, you think you're talking you to? Who, who, who ain't going to yeah. forever go back That's to where the magic is done. <laughs> That's where the magic happens. <laughs> Greatest Tom. magic show I ever seen <laughs> is in it. Tom Magic City. Yeah. Huh? It makes your they're money all... disappear. Oh, my God, it's the best. <laughs> they're magicians. You, you all right, married. Steve, let's shut this down so we can this fool, go to Miss so Ann. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ann Tripp. Thanks, everybody. Good morning, everybody out there. This is Antrip with the news for this new week. The pressure continues to mount on Virginia Governor Ralph Northam as members of his own party call for his resignation over the picture he placed on his 1984 medical school yearbook. It's a snapshot of two men, one in blackface and a black wig, the other in a white pointed clan hat and robe. He's apologized. I cannot change the decisions I made, nor can I undo the harm my behavior caused then and today. But I accept responsibility for my past actions, and I am ready to do the hard work of regaining your trust. 
The focus also trained on Northam's alma mater, Eastern Virginia Medical School, specifically why office, officials there let a yearbook picture like that get by or be printed in the first place. So now the school's issued a statement saying they're going to conduct an investigation into the pictures put in all past yearbooks. Florida's brand new Secretary of State, meanwhile, already out of a job, Michael Ertel, a Republican, resigned after photos of him surfaced wearing blackface and making fun of black Katrina victims. The photos showing Ertel at a Halloween party in 2005, face blackened, piece of material wrapped around his head, red lipstick, a t-shirt stuffed to look like breasts, and the words Katrina victims scrawled across it at the time Ertel was Seminole County's election supervisor. And now Ohio Senator Sherrod Brown tells NBC's Meet the Press that this nation has a bias problem, and he says it goes all the way to the top. We have a president who's a racist. He built his political career uh, knowing what he was doing on questioning the, the legitimacy and the birthplace of the president of the United States. There have been all kinds of news reports about what he did early in his career on housing. Charlottesville was only a symptom and and a more public viewing and outing, if you will, of the president's views about race. I mean, there, there, there's just no question about that. The Ohio Democrat reportedly thinking about running for president in 2020. Last week, Jersey Senator Cory Booker threw his hat into the ring. By the way, Republicans are also criticizing Virginia's Democratic governor uh, for his picture. Senate leader Mitch McConnell calls Northam con- Northam's conduct unforgivable. But get this, pictures have surfaced of McConnell posing in front of a big old Confederate flag. And while Northern's picture was taken in the 80s, McConnell's was from the 90s. The first documented black uh, pro football player has finally been honored. The state of Ohio approved a tribute for Charles Fallis, who was called the Black Cyclone. Fallis was signed by the Shelby Blues of the American Professional Football Association in 1904. He was born February 3rd, 1879, grew up in Worcester, Ohio. At tops of the box office for the weekend, third weekend in a row, was the superhero thriller Glass. Yesterday's Super Bowl, the New England Thruway, through New England Patriots rather trounced the L.A. Rams 13 to three. Was like the lowest scoring game in the history of the game. Both Cardi B, and Rihanna, you know, turned down offers to perform at the halftime in order to show their respect for Colin Kaepernick. Gladys Knight sang the national anthem. A lot of her fans gave her no credit for that, but her actual performance, everybody loved. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as Miss Ann mentioned earlier, Virginia Governor Ralph Northam is uh, refusing to resign after increased pressure to do so over the weekend. Uh, Steve, you know, he was asked to resign after a racist yearbook picture surfaced of him. Uh, The picture was taken when he was in medical school, and it shows two people, one in blackface, and the other wearing a Ku Klux Klan robe and hood. In Governor uh, Northam's initial statement, he said, I apologize for the decision I made to appear, as I did in this photo. But then on Saturday, he claimed he wasn't sure he was in the picture. At the same press conference on Saturday, he admitted that in the past, he put some shoe polish on his face as part of a Michael Jackson costume for the 19, for a 1984 dance competition. What do you think? I mean, I heard his original apology, mm-hmm. and I went, okay, wow, damn. But they, everybody was calling for his reg- resignation. He's a Democrat. Republicans and Democrats were calling. So that night, he went home, and he talked to his wife and came back and said, I've looked at the photo really good, and it's not me. <laughs> it's not me in the photo, but it's on his yearbook page. But then he said he never bought the yearbook. Yeah. And so he never knew it was there until it was brought to his attention yesterday. Confused. You know, the day before. Right, right. So I was trying to watch the dude because this is something that happened when he was 25. Yeah, so years ago. And it was 35 years uh-huh, ago. Uh-huh. But now I looked at the three pictures in the yearbook that mm-hmm. was not supposed that, that what was the pictures of him real self. That were, that were him and then weren't him. Okay. No, I'm looking. They had a picture of his foot up on a uh, pickup truck. Uh-huh. Him sitting in front of a Corvette and his stock, you know, high school. I mean, medical photo. Mm-hmm. To me, all those pictures Were look like a wider, broader guy uh-huh. than the dude in the uh, black face. Uh, okay. I to me, 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was trying to work with the dude, right? <laughs> Give him the benefit of the doubt. But then when he turned around and he made two mistakes to me, he said, I did put some black shoe polish on my face to be Michael Jackson. <sighs> And I only put it under my eyes because we all know how hard it is to get black shoe polish off your face. Okay, that makes sense. And I went, <laughs> not no, at all. We don't all know how hard it <laughs> right. is to get. I, I can tell you how hard it is to get this black off your skin. Okay. <laughs> but I can't tell you how hard it is to get this black shoe polish. All right, coming up at 34 after the hour, we'll tell you who might be the next owner of an NFL team. And it's a black man. Imagine that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, it looks like Diddy might be the next businessman to enter the NFL owner's fraternity. TMZ caught up with uh, New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft over the weekend. And Kraft said he really likes Diddy. And uh, he's very serious about Diddy owning an NFL team. Kraft was a big supporter of Diddy when he made a push to buy the Carolina Panthers. This was back in 2017. But the Panthers team, if you recall, was sold to hedge fund manager David Tepper instead. TMZ then caught up with Diddy. Guess where, guys? Mm. At Magic City in Atlanta. Come on here, boy. <laughs> that's what that's what happens, huh? Yeah, he caught up I keep with keep telling the... you. <laughs> That's where the deals go down. Uh-huh. <laughs> TMZ caught up with Diddy at uh, Magic City later that evening and asked him about the ownership situation. And Diddy simply responded, quote, it's time. I love that. You know, Diddy had talked previously about the importance of having a black owner in the NFL. And with reports that several NFL teams could be in the market for a new owner this year, Kraft's support of Diddy could play a very, very big role. Yeah. Rocks. I like the name. Uh-huh. You want to go tonight, dog? <laughs> it's a black man's golf course, baby. You want to go tonight? <laughs> it's what? <laughs> it's a black man's golf course. You want to go tonight, dog? Let's go. He's so quiet right now. I got right you. Yeah. I got you on everything. Drink you some Where's the barbershop? It ain't no damn strip club. You put <laughs> your sunglasses yeah. on. I don't even know you're in there, man. <laughs> Yeah, he mixed that up, didn't he? It is a barbershop. Yeah. No, barbershop is our country club. You're not finna put that on us, though. Well, Somebody on this show got to have some damn sense. Him and that stupid ass Jay. But 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 Steve, he did say something you like. He did say wings on me. He did say that. I heard that. Wings like on wings. me, baby. Yeah, and you love wings, you know. And if you don't get the wings, yeah. the breast and the thighs are unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> you do enjoy a lemon pepper wing, Steve. Uh, <laughs> so no, the you deals, try. The deals go down try. in Magic City, huh? Uh, you know, so I, 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 it, it, it is time. Mm-hmm. Uh, be, but it's a club now. It's a club they're in. And uh, it's, it's hard to get into membership, you know. It's, oh, it's to a own club. a team, you mean? Mm-hmm. It's an exclusive club. Okay. And, you know, it's it's going to take some more barriers to knock that wall down because it's such a money game to them and a such a this is what we say amongst ourselves uh-huh. type group. It's like NASCAR. Mm. It's like NASCAR, man. It's very tough for black drivers to get in there to own race cars. It's 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 been done by Wendell Scott and... You know, others, and there's some cats out there right now that's making headway. But it's a dog fight. It's wow. a real dog fight. And to be uh, the brother that got in there that was in last year, that uh, participated, I forgot his name, mm-hmm. in a NASCAR race, that was huge. Oh, oh NASCAR. <clears throat> so, you know, it, it it is time, man. It is very much time. Yeah. But that Robert Kraft, man, does he he just looked like money just sitting down there looking at his feet. Uh, that money. got it. I know. Was he in Magic City, too? <laughs> <laughs> Tommy said that's where the deals go down. That's where the deals yeah, go down. He's in there. <laughs> yeah, he was in there, Jay. He had to be in there, man. <laughs> Eating wings with his pinky fingers out. <laughs> Seriously, man. Yeah, I shout out to TMZ do. for posting up to find everybody they wanted to talk to right yeah. now. No, for real. I had a famous dude ask me, Steve. Mm-hmm. We going down to Magic City, man. Can you any way you could pull through? I said, dog, ain't no way in hell I can pull through. <laughs> what you talking about? Any way I could pull through? No, ain't no way in hell. I, dog, do you know how hard I work to get here? 
I, I, my brand don't say Magic City. Mm. So true. I can't. True. And it, but to be honest with you, mm-hmm. I'm not strip club dude, man. I just mm-hmm. have never been. I just ain't that dude, man. Magic oh. City will change you. Yeah. yeah, you, you just go gotta go, right? You make your, your <laughs> club, dude. That's what oh no, I've been. Oh, Joe Tory took me to Magic City. Uh-huh. Oh, probably when I was about thirty, uh, thirty-four, maybe. I don't know where. I, All right, we well, gotta go, guys. Time to switch up. Uh, nephew Tommy is here with the prank phone call. That's coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, coming up at the top of the hour, well, about four minutes after the hour anyway, uh, my strawberry letter for today, the subject, should I do it for the culture? Hmm. But right now, the nephew is in the building with the prank phone call for today. What you got, Neff? Girl, I got to drop that aqua boogie current right here. That aqua (laughs) boogie. My mom's favorite. (laughs) Aqua boogie current. Let's run that, y'all. Here it is. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach Marvin please. Yes, Marvin speaking. Uh, Marvin, hi. I'm calling you from Doc's office. I'm actually the lab technician. Um, and you, you came in and got a physical, I guess, about a couple weeks ago? Yeah. Okay, and it's my understanding this is for your for your occupation, correct? Yeah. Okay, you, you're in that. What do you do for a living when you're a... Um... Oh, yeah, I'm a truck driver. Okay. Now, I was giving you a call about, I'm here looking at your records and all the testings that you actually went through. Um, wow. Let's see. Have you had any? Have you had any activity or any problems around your navel area? No, nah, everything been fine. Okay. Everything all right, huh? Yeah, everything is fine. But I mean, you you haven't had any any type of uh, nothing, no breakout or anything around your navel or whatsoever. No, nah, man. The second time you asked me about my navel. No, nah, everything going straight, man. Okay. Trying to see what's going on, man. What's happening? Okay. Actually, you've been diagnosed with um. Oak triositis. And oak triositis, oak. oak triositis is actually a fungus that comes out of South America. And you, you, you have no activity whatsoever around your navel? No, man, quit asking the same thing, man. Oak triositis. It's oak triositis, sir. And what, what, what you say that? What that is is actually, you're, you're, if you haven't had it yet, you say you haven't had any activity, there's going to be like a small little tree that's going to be growing from your navel. And it, it gets about six inches long, and it, it probably bears about, probably about 25 to 30 leaves on it. But it's very small. Whoa, whoa, what in that back by me? You see a tree going to be growing out my navel. It, it's going to be a small tree, and uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to have to get you to come back in. Probably in the next month, we're going to need you to come in so we can check it out. But it's got to grow its fullest potential before we can actually do anything to it. Nah, I can't come in in a month. I got to come in today, man. Somebody got to tell no, we, me what's we, going we, on, man. We, get this problem resolved, man, because I'm going to get married, man. Well, we can't. It has to grow its fullest potential, sir. And uh, the full term is actually like about four weeks before we can actually. Man, I'm not waiting for no four weeks, man. Somebody got to come tell me something right now, man. I ain't going to go married, man, and have to fly out of town, man, and have something growing out of my neighbor, man. Y'all going crazy, man. Sir, oak triositis is something that's very rare. We were actually getting this assignment from overseas in South America on how to treat this. Man, I don't give a damn. Where is it, man? Somebody's going to have to come give me some, some help right now, man. I'm going to get ready to get married, man. I'm not going to be putting up with it, man. Somebody in this office, man, got to come down here and do something for me, man. And what you say, if you say I can cut it out myself? Sir, the best I can do is probably trim it a bit, you know, and maybe knock a few leaves off, but I cannot touch the full stalk at all. Man, you can cut this, put a Band-Aid, do something Sir, if you cut it, there's a possibility. You cannot, sir. If you cut it, there's a possibility of hemorrhaging, and you're going to really create a bigger problem than what you have already. Man, this, I'm trying to get this pulled out, man. You didn't tell me can't nobody in that I'm driving down there to get this pulled out, man. I'm going to get married in two weeks, man, we finna fly to Jamaica and shit. Okay, now, somebody can do this for me. I pull this out of my shit. Sir, you cannot pull it out. You're gonna man, create... Shit, man. You're gonna create a bigger problem if you try to pull it out, sir. The problem is already there. I'm trying to get this shit down, man. You mean to tell me that big hospital ain't now, man, can help me? Sir, what you want me to do, sir, man? Sir, it's not something... I got some... mad I have shit poking out of my stomach, and you telling me it ain't you can do, man. Sir, oak triositis is not something that we treat all the time. Like I said, it hails from South America. So we got... I don't give a if it hails from, from Great Britain. Somebody that's a hospital for me to come down there and help me pull this 
bottles, man. Sir, I understand what you're going through, but we have to let it grow its full term, which is four weeks, sir. The full man, root of it. Letting it grow, man. I ain't finna let it grow, man. It's finna go down right now, man. Y'all gonna have to do something, man. Sir, there's nothing we can do. We can probably trim it a little bit. You the trim. Get some chainsaw and cut this. Man, do something. Sir, there's nothing we can do at this point but sit back and wait and let it grow its full term, okay? Can we get I'm you I'm not to doing no waiting, man. Somebody finna help me right now, man. Sir, can we get an appointment for you in the next four to five weeks? Can we do that? No, you got to get an appointment for me today. I'm finna get married, man. I'm finna fly to Jamaica. Man, I can't have no sticking out of me. I can't even sit at the airport, man. You gonna embarrass me like that, man. That sticking out my neighbor. You crazy? Sir, I understand it. And like I said, oak triositis is very rare. And it's it's something that we haven't treated that many times here in the States. But overseas, the message that we're getting is that we need to let it grow its full term. So you may tell me, ain't nobody in America got oak tree. What the f is the name of that shit, man? It's oak triositis, sir. So how the f I can get it if don't nobody else in the America got it. Sir, I could not believe that you were coming up with oak triositis here in the States. It's it's something very rarely seen here. There's been two people in the past that has been diagnosed with this, and they actually passed away. So now you're telling me some to die, and you're going to tell me three weeks. Man, I'm coming down another day, man. Somebody's going to do something for me, Sir, man. there's nothing that we can do today until four to five weeks. Of man, I got to go get married. I'm flying to Jamaica, man. Did you... What I just said, man. I'm hearing what you're saying, but I can't do anything if you don't see the tree already coming out of the navel yet. Cut the f off. Somebody got to do something now. Damn, what you want me to do, man? I don't know what I want you to do, sir, but I have one more thing I can tell you. Yeah, well, what you got to say, man? Are you listening? I'm listening to you, man. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your boy Earl. Man, you got to be f me, man. <laughs> Damn, man, tell that <laughs> man, I'm gonna kick that <laughs> out my way, man. Man, you too, nephew Tommy, man. Y'all, <laughs> man, y'all have me going crazy as hell, man. I'm looking all of my damn neighbor thinking the tree finna grow out this, <laughs> man. I'm on the air, man. No, you ain't on the air right now. Man, I'm already nervous and finna get married in two weeks. <laughs> crazy. Man, hey, man, I got one more thing to ask you, Marvin, man. What is the baddest, I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land? Steve Harvey Morning Show. Earl, <laughs> uh, if you're listening, your ass is out the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, you out of there. You, you tricked us, Tommy. <laughs> Oak Triosity. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't Aqua Boogie. That was Oak Triosity for y'all right there. We got pranked. Yeah, we you pranked <laughs> yeah, us with the prank. prank. Uh-huh. <laughs> February, February 14th, Valentine's night, 14, 15, 16. The nephew will be in Colleen, Texas. That is Colleen, Texas. Twice as funny comedy club. Brand new comedy club down there in Colleen, Texas. I will be there. 14, 15, 16. Tickets on sale right now. The following week, West Palm Beach, Florida. The Improv, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Tickets on sale right now. All right. Staying in the South where it's warm. Staying in the South. <laughs> <laughs> you let <Yeah>. lift. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, that was one of oh. Carla's favorites, you know. That's Carla's yeah. favorite. Hey, okay. Carla's can, out I, today. can I talk to y'all well. about something? Yes, of course. We have yeah. a few seconds. I didn't notice it. I'm going downtown to rehearse, right, mm -hmm. for the NFL Honors mm -hmm. in Atlanta. We don't have enough time for me to talk about this. If you can't do it in 30 seconds, the answer is no, sir. I sure can. Can't tell me that. I probably can. A lot of <laughs> <laughs> we come back, And pay good money for <laughs> it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, nephew. <laughs> Up next, it is the Strawberry Letter subject, Should I Do It for the Culture? Right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, on dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right now, right? Mm, buckle up. Hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the Strawberry Letter. Subject. <laughs> Should I do it for the culture? Dear Stephen Shirley, yeah, 
I'm a 32-year-old single female, and my family moved to the States when I was 15 so we could have a better life. In my culture, I grew up with a huge extended family, and we stick close together. But now I have my own apartment, and I love having my freedom. My mother often tells me that I should, should have been married years ago so she can have grandbabies, but I'm not ready for that. My parents both have good jobs and finally got the big house they were dreaming of, and they have moved more family members to the U.S. to live with them. Now my mother wants her brother, my uncle, to come live with them, but he can't seem to get his visa approved. So here's when the problem started. Three months ago, I had dinner with my family, and my mom asked me to do her a favor since I was still single and had my own place. Stephen Shirley, can you believe that my mother asked me to marry her brother, my uncle, so he could get citizenship? <laughs> my grandmother and father were in on it and said, uh, you know, that they had been discussing this for a while. I was so confused. First of all, I do believe that it's illegal to marry your relatives in this country. My parents and grandmother said it was no big deal and that families do it all the time. I got sick to my stomach and still can't believe they asked me to do that. It's hard for me to talk to them now without the constant pressure to do my part for the family bond. I know what you're going to say, but how do you tell my family that they're all crazy and this is so wrong? I'm afraid our bond will be broken forever. It's a cultural thing. Please help. Mm. Okay, what? You didn't mention it, so I have to ask you, what culture is this where you can marry your own uncle? Wh where? And, and no disrespect, of course, to your culture. Um, but I, I personally haven't heard of such a thing. I mean, I have heard of people, you know, dating and possibly marrying their cousins down, down, down the line. Cousins but not their uncles. I mean, not in the U.S. because that is not our culture. I, I would and, never marry Uncle Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you for pointing that out, nephew. <laughs> I mean, you... you I damn sure wouldn't have married <laughs> your stupid ass. <laughs> it's not about you guys. I'm not going to have your dumb ass nowhere near <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> I loved, you know, in the letter where you said... You have your, you're have you a 32-year-old single female. You have your own apartment, and you love having your freedom. Yes, that's, you know, what living in the U.S. is all about. You can, you're free to do what you want to do with your life, uh, control your own destiny. I, I think your family is pressuring you to do something against your will, something you're very uncomfortable with. I mean, I know if, if you were to be able to marry him, it wouldn't be a traditional marriage. I get that. But but who who would marry their uncle anyway? But you know you're 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 up against your whole family here, and and that's not easy because it's only you by yourself. So I have to tell you, you cannot cave into this request. You cannot. You gotta now. Uh, I know you said you don't want to talk to them, but you have to speak up for them and say no. I'm not doing this. Your family is just going to have to find another way to get Uncle whoever uh, uh, in the country. He's having a problem with his visa. Maybe that's telling you something right there. Maybe he doesn't need to be here. Steve? Well, well, well. <laughs> These are letters that I happen to specialize in. Yes. You know, Steve and Shirley, this 32-year-old single woman in Ritty, ro uh, wrote in and said that her family moved her to the States when she was 15, a better life and all that. Now, in my culture is the key to this whole letter. In my culture. Grew up with a huge extended family. We close together. You got your own apartment. You love your freedom now. My mother tells me that you, tells her that you should have been married by now so she could have some grandkids, but you ain't ready for that. Mm. Your parents got good jobs, finally got that big house they was dreaming of that they moved that family to the U.S. to live with them. Now your mama <laughs> want her brother, who is your uncle, to come live with them, <laughs> but he can't get a visa approved. Mm. Mm. Now, listen to me. First of all, you shouldn't have wrote in. Because you know who we got in charge of the office now. You know who our president is. Stop talking about your family trying to come here and ain't got no damn visa. Yeah, good point. This is not the, the time. 
we got we got Instagram, people doing podcasts. It's people can pull the excerpts from this show. They're going to find out where you wrote this letter from, and you and your whole damn family going to get sent back. <laughs> so I just wanted to throw that warning out before I share this with you. Now, your mama's brother can't get his visa. Mm. See, they're going to use that against him. So here's when the problem started. Three months ago, you was having dinner with your family. Your mama asked you to do her a favor since you were single and had your own place. Your mama asked you to marry her brother, <laughs> who is your <laughs> uncle, so he could get citizenship. What? That's so crazy. What are you talking about? <laughs> what culture is this? Right. This ain't culture. What this is called incest. <laughs> <laughs> this, this ain't culture. Lady, you wrote the letter wrong. Should I commit incest? Is what the title ought to be. <laughs> it's your damn uncle. Come on. Mm. Marry your uncle. Ruin your life so his old ass can have a life. <laughs> then you got to come over here and get divorced, which probably ain't no problem in your culture. It don't make no sense. First of all, your family is too close. <laughs> y'all too close. And this gonna make y'all just <laughs> ungodly close. That's funny. Man, this don't make no sense right here, man. I'm so sorry. You know, th- listen to me. There's got to be a reason why your uncle don't have nobody. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's got to be. What? So don't nobody want him? <laughs> now, they've been to paying his ass off on you. Hey, uh-huh. Hang on, Steve. We're going to have part two of your response so you know, to the right, strawberry letter. Have part two. Coming up at 23 after the hour. Should I do it for the culture right after this? You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we are, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter subject. Should I do it for the culture? Yeah, uh, this uh, woman who's 32, in some culture, she won't tell us who it is. We can't guess because we don't want the emails and letters. <laughs> uh, they moved to the state she was 15 for a better life. I grew up with a huge extended family and everything, blah, blah, blah. I love. She moved out on her own apartment. She loved having the freedom. You know, she was in, locked up in the house. Then your mama often tell me how she should have got married because she want to have grandkids by now. And, you know, both her parents got good jobs, and they finally got a nice big house and all this here. And they want more family members to come to the U.S. to live with them. I warned her on the last break to stop saying this because of the man we have in the White House. <laughs> He find out y'all trying to come over here and they got these damn visas. visas. They gonna do some research and all y'all ass gonna be back. So <laughs> I just family. wanted her to slow down. Mm-hmm. Her mother uh, tells, wants her brother, who is your uncle, to come live with, you, with them. But he can't seem to get his visa approved. Now, if this is from one of the seven countries that Don Trump has, you know, mm-hmm. put on the list, we... We probably shouldn't even be discussing this, but let's just move on. Three months ago, you're having dinner with your family. Your mama asked you to do you a favor since you're still single and had your own place. The lady said, Stephen Shirley, can you believe that my mama asked me to marry her brother, my uncle, so he could get citizenship? (laughs) To marry her brother, my uncle. Mm. And my grandmother and father was in on it, too. Said they've been discussing this for a while. Listen to me. This is not called culture. This is called incest. (laughs) That ain't what we do over here. You can't do that, young lady, and you know it, and I'm glad you said at the end of the letter, I am sick to my stomach. (laughs) <laughs> yes. And your whole damn family ought to be too. Mm-hmm. That crazy ass request. Not man, your damn uncle. I wish somebody would have came up to me talking about we marry your aunt. <laughs> you seen my aunt? Steve. No, hell no. <laughs> 
You know, my Aunt Agnes, I told her when I was a little boy, if I ever made it, all my jokes was going to be about her because she was evil. My Aunt Agnes, and I'm telling you right now, wouldn't do nothing for me. I couldn't go to the store to earn a nickel like the rest of the kids. She used to send the kids to the store to make a nickel, right? She wouldn't let me go because I studied. And she don't want to wait all day for her pack of cigarettes. <laughs> oh, that's why you're mad at her. Oh, <laughs> Tell this the time. truth. <laughs> yeah. So I told her, she told me, you ain't going to ever be nothing. I told her, I t- when I told her I was going to be on TV, mm-hmm. anybody got all day to wait on you to say nothing on TV? <laughs> oh, I said, you disrespectful, <laughs> wide-bodied, <laughs> you big, <laughs> big, don't be Moose mad. Looking. I, I love Aunt Agnes. I couldn't stand my aunt, man. She get on my nerves. I look like man hoe, old ass. You said, then she said, then you said in the letter, you said, I do believe that it's illegal to marry your relatives in this country. You damn right it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you damn right it is. My parents and grandmother said it was no big deal. And their families do it all the time. Do it where? <laughs> do it where? I don't know what your culture is. This ain't what we do over here. Uh-uh. I got sick to my stomach. And it's hard for me to talk to them now without the constant pressure to do my part for the family bond. I know what you're going to say, but how do I tell my family that they all crazy and this is so wrong? <laughs> Go tell your family that this is all crazy and this is so wrong. And then yeah. walk out. <laughs> and keep your apartment. Quit moving all right. them people in. Mm-hmm. You're going to end up, your apartment going to look like your mom and daddy house. <laughs> A bunch of people sitting up in there that ain't got no damn visa. <laughs> And when ICE find out and everybody, they coming to your house and everybody going back to whatever culture you in. This is a dangerous letter, young lady. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what I say to you. From this moment on, disown your family. (laughs) Quit going over there. Quit parking your car over there. Matter of fact, move out I move out this apartment mm-hmm. and get another and don't tell none of them where it is. Mm. Mm. Marry your uncle. That's crazy. Sitting up in here with his old ass. <laughs> Belching. Well, and see, you know the reason. Here the re- huh? Why? <laughs> why he can't find nobody to marry him? You know why? Because don't nobody want him. Oh. <laughs> That's Don't a- nobody want him. Now he over here, they done put him off on you. Everybody in the family know there's something wrong with your uncle. <laughs> That's why he ain't married now. <laughs> sitting over there. They got one tooth just sitting up in the middle uh-huh. of his head. <laughs> yeah. Sitting over there, man. That's crazy. Yeah. Don't make no sense. Yeah, she, she's got to speak up for herself and tell them she's not with it. They just need like to that. Say it just like that. Yeah. I'm not with this. I'm not with this at all. <laughs> tell your mama to marry. Find another way. But she's already married to her dad. Okay, divorce yeah, your daddy. Uh-huh. <laughs> Soon as you marry your brother, divorce your brother and remarry your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, since we're making crazy-ass <laughs> offers. <laughs> How about that, mama? <laughs> All right, guys. What? What? Why don't he marry grandmama? Grandmama ain't got nobody. Hit us up on Instagram at Steve Harvey FM with your thoughts on today's Strawberry Letter. And coming up in 10 minutes, more foolishness from the guys. And a comedy segment called Say What? Say What? Say What? You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we are. Um, it is time now for a comedy segment. Uh, Jay has titled Say What? Tell us Diva about it, Jay. Say What Moments. When somebody says something you so ignorant, uh-huh. you hear it, and all you can do is respond by saying, Say What? Oh. Here we go. Welcome to the show. I put you down as a co signer for my new car. Say what? Say, say what? <laughs> hey man, you had a hundred dollars on the counter. I took twenty five for some gas. Say what? <laughs> They're gonna deliver some packages to your house. Don't open them. Save them till you see me. <laughs> say okay, what? Now you're crazy. 
<laughs> if, if I pass away, I put you down as guardian for my eight kids. <laughs> What? Hey, Jay, I got one for you. You got one? Hey, man, can I borrow 50000 <laughs> Say what? Hey, Say what? what? <laughs> you get that a lot, I bet. <laughs> I got some televisions in the backseat of my car. I'm going to park your, my car in your backyard for a while. Just a while. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I took $40 out the collection plate. This Sunday. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> Say what? Say what? <laughs> Say what? <laughs> yeah, God. Hey, man, if police call you, tell them I spent the night over here last night. Okay, I'm going to do one. You you doing okay. Say What moments. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And I'm going to do WTF moments. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> Come on, okay. Jay. Hey, man, I'm going to be your chauffeur for the evening, but I need to stop and pick up a package. Say Mm. what? Say what? (laughs) Come on, WTF. I just WTF. Say, man, uh, Uh my mama got feelings for you. (laughs) Say what? Mm. No, No. that ain't no thing. No. (laughs) You tell me your mama, dog. Okay, I'm gonna switch it up and do a, a WTF. <laughs> I need you to marry my brother so he can get his papers over here. <laughs> yeah, damn, that's you. you stole it. <laughs> Take that my next one. Dog. Great mind, okay, great got, mind. I got Come a on, WTF Tommy. for you. Go ahead. WTF. Listen, I think your wife pregnant for me, but it ain't nothing we can't work out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? That's a well, that's a that's both. That's a combo right. right there. I got a WTF. That's a combo. I got a definitely WTF. Here we go. That green stuff you had in that plastic bag didn't smell right, so I threw it out. Okay. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Why you did that? <laughs> hey man, oh. I got one WTF. Got one. Ding dong. Hello? Who is it? Uh-huh. Who is it? Ding dong. Yeah, I'm at the door. Ding dong. Okay. Who is it? Uh, it's me, man. Uh, open the door and then look, and then you come to the door and open it. Mm-hmm. And I'm standing right. in the house. And I go, hey, man, listen. Just just be cool. The FBI is outside. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, I'm going to need you to. No, no. What? You going to need me to what? <laughs> Wow. FBI is outside. <laughs> There's some people that heard that before. <laughs> hey. For real. I got, I got a WTF. Uh, what? Whoa. Hey, man, you know that girl you met in the club last week? She told me to tell you, you need to go to the doctor right away. <laughs> <laughs> right away. <laughs> this is bad. Oh, that is. Uh, you never want to hear those words, ever. Hey, man, I thought I was putting a perm on your head, but this is actually bleach, dog. This is going to be a different... Man, my bad. I... WTF? I got a WTF. Go ahead, Steve. I got one. Okay. Hey, man, you ain't see it. Donald Trump just mentioned your name in a tweet. <laughs> WTF. That's a, yeah, that's a real WTF. <laughs> I got, I got a WTF. You hmm. had the barber and you hear him go, oops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Been yeah. there. That's immediately. <laughs> yeah, that has happened. <laughs> For real. <laughs> hey, man, is, uh, it, who bedroom is on the left, man? Your mama or your son? Because <laughs> I don't, man. No. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. I don't want to be. The, uh, hey, coach, how you doing? I, I'm doing fine. I just wanted to let you know that uh, mm-hmm. we've decided uh, that your daughter is going to be the starting fullback on the all boys <laughs> football team. <laughs> that is Thank wrong. You. <laughs> 
My daughter ain't went out for no football yet, but I've seen her in the hallway. <laughs> this is going to be what? WTF. Wow. You, you took your boy to the bank. He comes out and goes, drive, 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 drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jay. Jay, I had that happen one time, man. Talk. I was 20 years old. I took a dude to the store, man. And I'm sitting in the car, man. He said, hey, man, I'm going to pay for your gas and everything. I said, cool. He come out, he jump in the car. Drive. Roll, roll, roll. But roll. No, no. No, no, partner. I'm putting this in park. I'm getting out. Oh, I got, I got a WTF okay. for all of us. Check this one out. Come on. Here we go. What you mean we was live? <laughs> I'm over here scared right now. Close it up. Yeah, okay. that was okay. for all of us, Jay. Okay. You got one, Tommy? Come on, hit it. Watch this. It's, it's ignorant now. Hurry. Hey, man, uh, brother, excuse me. I, I, I was here at the party. I got drunk over here last night, man. What's, what, uh, what, what, what's, what happened over here? We had a wonderful time last night. Oh. <laughs> oh. Up at the top of the hour, <laughs> we're going to talk about Steve Harvey and Monique right here on this show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Steve, it yeah. was all over social media. Everybody was talking about it. I got several phone calls about it. You interviewed our girl Monique. For an upcoming episode of your TV show, I believe it's going to air this Wednesday on your talk yeah. show, Steve, right? Day after tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. So she came on your show. She's got a Las Vegas residency now. So she came on your show to promote her Las Vegas residency. Right. And then you all got into other conversations. Yeah. So now, what what happened with this interview with um, with Monique? I mean, were you guys serious? Because you know what was circulating that she said she was going to hit you or slap you, and, yeah, and people were wondering. People were wondering if she was serious. Yeah, yeah, she said it, mm -hmm. but but Mo was really just joking. Yeah, she was kidding. I thought she said it, and somebody in the audience immediately called the social media blogs, and went. They almost went to blows, and she was going to slap Steve and. And all this here. She said it, but she was joking with me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, you know, she said, uh, you know, I'm I'm gonna bust you dead in your mouth. <laughs> I said, and when you do that, Mo, mm -hmm. you go right backstage and bring your husband out here because I'm gonna whoop his ass. <laughs> this was all in fun, right? So here. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That well, I was serious. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I was serious. She was joking. So I what, was serious. What were you guys talking about? What? what I mean, you know, the, the mm -hmm. whole Tyler Perry, Whoopi Goldberg, Oprah Winfrey, oh, yeah. Lee Daniels. Mm -hmm. We 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 had a heated exchange, but I felt though, after really talking to Monique, mm -hmm. that Monique was coming from a place where she had been hurt, and I was coming from a place of having been Monique's big brother. Mm -hmm. figure for a while and we 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 were like a brother and a sister having a real discussion about it she was saying why she felt she was wrong I was trying to say to Mo why I thought she could have done things differently mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, she felt as though I should have come to her aid and and sat with her and I admitted to her that looking back on it in hindsight mm -hmm. if I could have came to her aid sooner, I should have, to say, hey, May, ho Mo, hold on. And it, I, you know, I felt like it was handled the wrong way. We ended up having a 58-minute interview. Wow, and we can see part of that interview on your show on Wednesday, right? Part Check of it will be on that Wednesday. Then mm -hmm. I'm going to release it on digital. Okay. You like know. the entire interview? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the entire interview on digital, and it's it's explosive. Mm -hmm. But it was the Mo and I hugged because I hadn't seen Mo, so Mo and I hugged a long time before it started and a long time afterwards. And Mo Mo is like my sister, man. We may be a dysfunctional family, mm -hmm. but Mo like my sister. And after talking to Mo. I had a little bit better understanding of where she was coming from. I hope she had a little bit better understanding because I, 
I sided with her where she was right, but I had to also tell her where she was wrong. Well, that's what a big brother would do. And, you know, mm-hmm. it, it came down to us exchanging parts because she kept saying to me, what did what have I done wrong? And I kept having to point it out. Mm-hmm. But then I had to understand where she was coming from because she's been hurt. And Mo is one of the most talented people I've ever run across. This girl is funny, man. But you watch in the movies, oh, yeah. the girl can act too. Yeah, yeah. Well, she and has an And for Oscar her to not it. to be in a position <laughs> to turn that Oscar into a financial reward has been tragic. And it's been twofold because she has been blackballed from Hollywood uh, initially because she got labeled as difficult to work with. So she did get blackballed. And then uh, her reaction to it brought about some other things. And it's just been a snowball for her. And I really want the snowball to end Mm -hmm. for Monique because Monique is an incredibly gifted person. But I think we got to get off this treadmill because Oprah did teach me something that I've had to remember Mm -hmm. is that you can't kill darkness with more darkness. You have to come bring light into the room. And that's what I kept saying to Mo. And we have to find a way to turn this around for this sister with light. And we can't keep exchanging hateful barbs at one another and expect this to turn in to light. And after I sat there with Mo, I don't want to see Mo's career, you know, take a hit. And I know some things about Monique personally that I can't say Mm -hmm. that would be up to her to tell y'all. But she's gone through a lot. And I'm just don't I don't want to no longer be a catalyst for not helping this sister out because everybody deserves a second chance and everybody deserves a chance to get it right. You know, so. Well, um, we'll check out the interview and maybe this Las Vegas residency, uh, you know, will start that road back to the light. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's a good thing, man, Mm -hmm. because that's a big honor. To get mm-hmm. a, resi- a, a residency in mm-hmm. Vegas. Mm-hmm. You know, they got to think of you out there rather highly. Oh, and yeah. so now she's she's claiming, and which probably is right, because I don't know, but Mo is the first African-American woman comedian to get a residency in Vegas as a stand-up. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, I mean, I don't know any others that's done it. But that's what she said, you know. Okay, but, oh, well, well, we'll be watching the uh, episode to air uh, this week. Check your local listings. And for then we'll the... put the extended version mm-hmm. on the website, you know. Now, let me ask you something. Let me ask all the guys something, especially you, Steve. Would you guys consider a residency uh, yeah. in Vegas? Oh, yeah. oh wow. Jay, Before I could get the Jay, question out. Hell yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. But, but um, um, Marsha <clears throat> Walker has one, Marcia, and so does George it. Wallace and mm-hmm. Eddie Griffin. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, oh Marsha right Warfield had one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's in okay. Vegas every week. Okay. Every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in a minute, in a heartbeat. But you would, you would consider it, what oh, about, yeah. what about? You know about something, it. man? You, Steve. The way my life is going right mm-hmm. now, I'm, I might consider that. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and, and you want to know why? Why? Because NFL honors taught me something. A lot of people did not know. They see me as a talk show host and Family Feud. Mm-hmm. I had to flip my brand. A lot of people don't know me as a stand-up. So NFL Honors was the most highly trended thing on YouTube the next day. Oh, okay. So well, I made, you know, Steve Harvey. <laughs> More of the Steve Harvey <laughs> show season. coming up right after With this. Yeah, Anthony Brown. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hi, so Steve, you were at the Super Bowl. We talked about it earlier this morning. I just have a question for you. Uh Uh-huh. How wrong did you eat? (laughs) How wrong? You know what? Um, I did all right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, you know, I was in a suite, and they had. They had chicken wings, pulled pork sandwiches, hot dogs. Uh Uh, mac and cheese, uh, sautéed potatoes, mm-hmm. uh, a dessert buffet, mm-hmm. <laughs> that uh, good. hamburgers. Ooh. They had fresh pizza. Dude in there was making pizzas. Uh, mm-hmm. They had uh, ice cream. 
they they bought out in these boxes uh wow. individual out so i ate the ice cream mm-hmm. okay. had the mac and cheese oh 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 I any stayed away from the that? meat. I didn't eat any red meat. Uh-uh. Um, I bit into what I thought was a piece of fish. It was a piece of chicken because it was it had it was fried. Okay. You know? Did did you hear your nephew by any chance? What's that? You didn't was hear it any caviar in there at all? Because <laughs> you was in a rich suite, so I know they. You know he can't he live without. Well, see, he rich people. The thing caviar. about rich people, Tommy is. They're not, they don't define their richness but caviar. By caviar! <laughs> well, how is they defined? <laughs> <laughs> if you ain't re- defining it that way, how, what are you doing? Is you know it's not by chicken wings, right? <laughs> well, see, that's what was in there. Uh-huh. See, mm. the, when you got money, Tommy, them people, they don't, they ain't got to have caviar. So rich way. people is eating chicken wings? See, he doesn't think they're really rich if they're not. Could have had the wings in Magic City if you went in all the way down the field. Yeah, I'm just gonna do that. (laughs) You eating wings? All right. Well, look, we pulled some facts about eating habits from uh, (laughs) for the Super Bowl. Uh, We told you last week that Americans ate about a hundred. Of 1.3 billion chicken wings for the Super Bowl, okay? Now, that's four wings for every man, woman, and child in the U.S., or enough to encircle the earth three times. That's according to the National Chicken Council. Okay, you could take Where that up with all the, these chickens at. You could take I that know. up with the National Chicken Council, Steve. I don't believe that, man. They hyping their product too. <laughs> all right, now Super Bowl Sunday, that was yesterday. That's one of the biggest days for eating ever. It is the second biggest day for eating in the US. It's right behind Thanksgiving in terms of food consumption. One person could take in as many as 2400 calories and 121 grams of fat. That's a lot. Oh, of fat. that ain't nothing. And and that's just during the game. That's nothing. 121 grams of fat, 2,400 calories. Hell no. What? Hell no. I think that's a 2, lot. 2,400 calories. Yeah, that's a lot. Isn't that like twice the the, the required Look, amount? Michael Phelps, the Olympic swimmer, swimmer he, when he was training, yeah. his calorie input was 12,000 calories a day. I sat yeah. next to a dude in the suite uh-huh. that easily ate Michael <laughs> Phelps 12,000 calories, and his ass looked like he eats 12,000 <laughs> calories without training. Yeah, but Phelps burned it, you know, with the swimming and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't believe that number about the chicken wings going around the world billion? three times. Where's all these chickens at? <laughs> They're consumed. They yeah, people ate them. Come on, man. <laughs> All right, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show while we figure this whole chicken wing thing out right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Steve, you were telling us earlier uh, that you wanted to talk about uh, the number of scooters you were saying. Hey, I'm in Atlanta. I didn't Uh know about this. What? And I'm driving down to rehearsal, Mm -hmm. and I kept noticing all these like little razor looking scooters just laying on the ground. Mm-hmm. Some of them was on kickstand. They was lime green. Then I saw a bunch of black ones. And I just kept seeing them so much that I asked the driver, I said, hey man, mm-hmm. what the hell is going on with all these scooters <laughs> laying on the ground? The scooter takeover. That's the latest, dog. Yeah. That's and the it, they saw some lime bike, lime. Lime and bird is another Two companies, group. Lime and Bird, right. So oh, you can okay. just got this app, hold it up against that, it cuts on. You can ride it wherever you are, wherever you want. You can just stop and get off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They were all over Atlanta. <laughs> yep. Just all on the ground and stuff. I said, man, who cut and then I said, I said, who picks these up? He said, anybody can pick them up wherever they are. Mm-hmm. Your GPS, your app tells you where they're located. You can walk right there, wow. and the GPS tells you where it is. You can just pick it up, put your app up against it, and start riding. But, Steve, were they, you're saying it like, were they, like, in the way? They or was they on the just... ground, man. I mean, they were, like, some of them was on curbs. Uh-huh. Some of them was, was halfway on the sidewalk, halfway okay. on the tree lawn. Some of them was on the kickstand. Uh-huh. A lot of them were just laying down. 
So they just mm. get on them and just get off and just leave them and just go. I couldn't they... believe it. I was watching the guy ride you next to the You treat him like a truck. bad relationship. Yeah. You just leave. <laughs> you know, I saw a guy ride next to my SUV. Uh huh. We were in traffic, so we going kind of slow. Mm -hmm. He pulls up, gets off, lays it in the grass on the tree line, mm -hmm. and then turns the corner and goes somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said, well, what's going on, man? <laughs> Anybody? Want, I, I, I was so confused. So then I found out mm -hmm. that this guy in Atlanta makes a living because if anybody charge finds one and takes it home and charges it up, mm -hmm. you get fifteen dollars for charging it up. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the figure they told me in Atlanta. So okay. this brother who was out of work, he got hold to a truck and started. Going around, picking them up, taking them to his house, charging them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then he got smart. He started traveling with these generators. Wow. That, you know, mm. cranks up electricity, mm -hmm. plugs them into there. And while they plug it, he ride around and get some more and bring them back, unplug them, drop them. And he, this dude. He created himself. Employment. He created employment for himself. He said, "Man, if I charge a hundred of these a day, uh huh, at fifteen dollars, that's one thousand five hundred dollars." Wow. Hustle, baby. Yeah, get your Hustle. grind on. Man, I love grind. it. Yeah, I love that. So Who did you thought it is? Did you think about getting out and and riding one just for the just for fun? The hell would I do that for? <laughs> just that. I'd like to get a picture of that. There were so many. Yeah, there's so many. Yeah, yeah. man. With, with your, your gators, gators on, on dog. Yeah. <laughs> you got your gators on. You coming down Raping the street, the man. Yeah. Stop with your gators. Yo, Louis Vuitton scarf, yeah. dog. Come on, man. Flying, blowing in the Flying wind. Flying in the wind. <laughs> yeah, man. I see this clearly, man. You got the vision, nephew. You got the Go right man, to Put Magic your... City. You ain't got the part. <laughs> Just drop the scooter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll be back to close out the show. <laughs> and Steve's closing remarks right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, here we are on this Monday, the day after the yep. Super Bowl 53. Yeah, last break of the day. <laughs> Jay, quit saying that. We was robbed. <laughs> Man, Jay. That, that, that Super Bowl <laughs> was probably one of the boringest. That's it. It wins that. It was cool. It it was really, and I went, and so it was just mm -hmm. like, a, man. It's playing like they didn't want to go. Is this, is this your first time That's going? Playing. Yeah. No, no, I've been before, but it's been a long time since I've been. Mm -hmm. But this was the lowest scoring game in history, right? Ever. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I've seen all 53 of them now. That's I've seen amazing. all of them. That's amazing. What's your yeah. biggest memory, Steve? Uh, I have none. The Browns ain't been in there. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any memories. Well, was it good to see Jim Brown in the football commercial celebrating 100 years? Was oh, yeah. it? oh, man. Yeah. It was better to see him at the NFL Honors, man. The NFL Honors oh, was uh -huh. really, really great for me, man. It was uh -huh. it was like an honor for me because I'm, I'm a real football fan. I actually – it's the greatest spectator sport in the world. Mm -hmm. It's way better than watching basketball on TV or baseball or soccer or golf. It's just, or boxing even. And why is that? Why do you say that? Because something's happening every play. Oh, okay. It, it's, it's something is happening every play. And, you know, I was having a discussion with somebody. They were talking about, Steve, who do you think is the best athletes, basketball players because the whole thing is they think that basketball players are the greatest athletes in the world. Mm -hmm. They're very athletic. I mean, they could do some amazing stuff in the air with that basketball. I take no credit from them. But I think the best athletes in the world are football players that play at wide receiver, that play at corner, that play at running back. Because, you know, basketball players can dunk. and But a lot of football players can dunk now. Mm-hmm. So you think football uh, players, get to me, the best, the, most especially in the skill positions on uh -huh. defense and offense. But right. these guys are special, man, because not 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 all basketball players can catch a football over the middle. Mm -hmm. Hell no. 
And basketball you know players saying? don't get picked no. up and slammed to the means. ground. So <laughs> you finna get cracked coming across there, man. No, yeah. man, I, I don't. You know, I don't. I basketball no players can't means. deal with the contact. No. After the catch or running the ball, uh-huh. that's why I think that the football player is the superior athlete overall. Okay. But mm. the NBA has some spectacular moments, you know. But but you have to be in some sort of condition to take the kind of hits and pounding that That's those gr- football it's play. Be yeah, yeah, it's grueling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. them dudes, grueling. man. Mm-hmm. At this time of the year, everybody has an injury. Mm-hmm. It's just a contact sport, man. It's the greatest sport to watch, and the Super Bowl is the one of the greatest sporting events. Yeah, yeah. Of the year, bar none. True. It's just it's a great sport, you know. Mm-hmm. I like baseball, but I can't. I don't watch baseball till the playoffs get there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And basketball, I follow, but I don't really get serious watching basketball till the playoffs get here. You know, I watch the All Star game. You know, it's just it's exciting to watch them boys operate and function. Mm-hmm. But it, it was a, it was a really really big thrill for me to do the mm-hmm. honors, man. And, yeah, you, know, you did a great job, Steve. You know, I, I mess with proud Baker Mayfield and. <laughs> The Browns that was over there. What was that like meeting him? What was that meeting like? Who? Baker Mayfield, the quarterback for the Browns. No, excuse yeah. me, Shirley. What was it like for him meeting me? <laughs> I don't give a damn about no meeting no damn Baker Mayfield. Well, I thought you did because he he won what seven eight <laughs> games this yeah, year. That's all he Are didn't you serious know? though? Ain't no honor. <laughs> I'm Steve Harvey, pimp. <laughs> you know how you feel meeting me? <laughs> it's a little boy, the only one, but you know, it's sort of crazy, man, go? because mm-hmm. I've had a career, man, that has ex- has spanned over many of these guys' entire career. And Primetime pointed that out to me, man. Hey, man, Primetime sent me an amazing message this morning. I haven't had a chance to text him back, but I got to cut. He said, brother, because I can read his text because Primetime don't cuss. Mm-hmm. Okay, but we do talk a little bit different. <laughs> okay, I, love I can't Brian. read that. I love okay. He looked great in that commercial yeah. and on the NFL Honors, too. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. that tux was nice. Mm-hmm. So, are you going to read I've got it? it? Well, let me, I'll read this part right here. Okay. Uh, my brother, he sent me this morning at 7.56. Mm-hmm. He said, my brother, and I hope he don't mind me reading this, but it's, it was really touched me. I haven't had a chance here. He said, my brother, you never cease to amaze me with your gifts from God. You kill the honors. All the players are still talking about it, regurgitating every word from a joke. Proud of you, man, and much love. Keep standing tall, cause, and then I have to stop. Well, that was nice. That was really yeah. nice. That was very yeah. nice. Right. That was good, Respect. man. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And I, because, you know, what made the moment special for me, and they said, because, man, they he connected with us. He was talking to us. Mm-hmm. You know, he knew about us. He knew oh, what we did. Oh, okay. They liked you know, the and his, that and then on the commercial breaks, mm-hmm. I had him open my mic. Uh-huh. And I went out there and talked to him for real. And the real funny stuff, oh, Lord. <laughs> you can't air that. Oh. <laughs> Uncut. I was I was out there. I let them have it. I said some real stuff right here. <laughs> like on one of the commercial breaks, a fan up in the stands hollered, "San Francisco, uh-huh. 49ers." I said, "Y'all ain't gonna ever be blank until y'all get Colin Kaepernick back at quarterback." <laughs> but we all know that ain't fitting to happen. Ain't it? <laughs> we gotta get out of here. Steve, y'all have a great day. weekend. It's Monday. <laughs> For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 